So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get a blurry background in your videos, also known as depth of field or bokeh. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Thick Media TV. Help you go further, faster in media. On this channel, we do tech gear reviews, video gear reviews, and tip videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during this video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out all of the resources as well as some bonus things as well. Let's get into the video. So you've probably noticed that it's super cool when you can get depth of field, when you can create the blurry background effect in videos. Maybe you've seen other YouTubers doing it, of course, filmmakers. And so how do you create that effect? You know, I'm not actually gonna share any of the science behind it, because I don't know that, but I've been doing video uh, for almost 15 years now. And uh, with DSLRs and even with point and shoots and some new phones, you're able to achieve that look. And so here's the things that you need to look for to really get a blurry background. One of the big tips is that it's pretty hard to achieve if you don't actually move away from the background. Like you want as much space between you and whatever your background is, right? And so sometimes if you're creating YouTube videos and you're sitting against a wall, it's gonna be darn near impossible to really achieve that look. The next thing to consider is that this is easiest to do with a DSLR or with a higher end point and shoot that has a lot of manual settings. And so what you're looking for on your DSLR is really the aperture and the length of the lens. And so here's what I mean. A super popular lens is the Nifty 50 by Canon. It comes out to about $125 US. And it is a 50 millimeter lens and it is a 1.8 aperture lens. And so those two metrics are what you wanna look for when it comes to creating depth of field and that blurry effect. Now, it causes a couple things to happen. One, when the lens is 50 millimeters, when it's longer and it's, if you have a wide angle lens, it doesn't really create depth of field. But when you've got a 50, an 85 millimeter or even longer, that is gonna help you. And then when you've got an aperture that can get in the low numbers, the higher you go on your aperture on your camera, meaning not 1.8, but if you went up to 10 or 20 outside, then that's going to lower how blurry the background is. But if you keep it at those low numbers, like running the lens at 1.8, then you're gonna have a very blurry background. So for instance, we're sh shooting right now on a uh, Canon L glass 50 millimeter lens, and I believe it's at 1.8. And this lens right now is at 1.8. So it's uh, a higher end lens than this, but it's basically giving you the effect of this blurry background. So I'm standing about eight feet away from the camera, and that's how it crops about this shot. And then the background is another, you know, 20 feet until that picture that you see blurred out. And so again, I have to be a certain distance away from the camera, which affects a lot of things, right? Your microphone, we switch to a lapel mic because the shotgun mic would be like, hey, how are you doing over there, right? You know, it'd be like too far if it's sitting on the camera. And um, it, you know, it affects some things. So those are some of the things that you want to be looking for. Now, another thing is that we actually had to mess with the shutter speed. And so on your DSLR, you're looking at your, your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. And so to run at a wide open, when you, when you have a lower aperture, like 1.8, it lets a lot more light in, and sometimes your shots can be overexposed. We have the ISO set as low as it goes. So in this case, we had to put the shutter speed at 250. Uh, and the reason that matters, I mean, you probably can't tell too much. It ends up looking fine, but usually on a DSLR, if you're shooting 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be double that or as close to that as possible. So you want it to be 60. If you are shooting 24 frames or you know uh, a second, then you want it to be 50. And, and that gives you smooth motion. So a little bit of different kind of jittery motion happens when you mess with the shutter speed, but that's okay. So we'll show you how to uh, set that up on your DSLR right now. All right. So to set this up on your camera, you want the ISO number uh, probably as low as it goes. And see then here on your aperture, this is where you're gonna get the blurry background, the depth of field. So you can put that number as, uh, number as low as your lens will allow to make for the blurry background. And then again, if that makes your, your exposure, which is that right there, uh, get too bright, then um, what you can do is adjust your shutter, shutter speed to get the exposure correct, and that will give you that blurry effect on your camera. 
So a couple of the lenses that are very popular for getting depth of field are the Sigma lens, because it's a little cheaper than usually a Nikon or a Canon lens directly. The one that is a Sigma 1.4. So the lower that aperture number gets, you're like, whoa, it's gonna get me more of that blurry background. A lot of times what that means though too, is that they're also a little bit more expensive, but you could shop around and look for a lens like that. And the 30 millimeter is nice because it's a good focal length, but it's not as much as 50. Like you could at least get a little bit closer to the camera, crank the aperture down to that you know, 1.4 on your camera and then have that good blurry background. And then the other thing to potentially look into is really long lenses, if you stand really far away, can create really cool effects. So this is a 70 to 200 lens. And what portrait photographers a lot of times will do is um, they will use this lens to get like completely blurred out backgrounds, right? It'll look like just creamy, sometimes like colors. You can't even see the detail of anything anymore. And not necessarily because the aperture goes very low, even uh, you know, at F4, aperture four, if you are at 70 or 200, you're still gonna get that depth of field. So the two things you're really considering are again, is how low can the aperture go? And then how far away can I get of the lens? How long can I make my lens you know, zoom out? And so just for an example, this is actually the 72, 100 lens, that huge lens. And it's probably zoomed into about, you know, 150 millimeters or so. Luckily we have this super long uh, lapel mic on here. But again, now it's at 2.8, because that's as low as the aperture goes on this lens, but you still got the blurry background because you're zoomed in so far. So for instance, even if you're shooting with your kit lens, if you wanna get you know, as much blurry background as possible, move the camera away from you, try to get off your background as much as possible, and then zoom it all the way in and keep the aperture as low as it'll go. But a lot of times, if you wanna get a blurry background, you just have to invest in a nicer lens. So now you can apply those principles to pretty much any camera, right? So this is the Canon G7X. This camera starts at 1.8. So it starts at a pretty wide aperture and 24 millimeters. And so that's why people like to vlog with it and it creates some depth of field. If you put it close to your face, then the background could be kind of blurry, but it also zooms in to 120 millimeters. So the lens on this is kind of like this, if that makes sense. It's right in the middle there. And so if you zoom this all the way in, um, it's only gonna go to 2.8. And so now if you were to shoot some portraits or some video with it, then it's gonna have that blurry background. And again, you wanna step off of your background and then you can actually um, you know, see that you get the blurry background. It's at, this G7X is at 2.8 and you're zoomed in all the way and you have created that effect. Again, the downside is on the G7X, to do that, there's no mic input or anything. So now you'd be really far away from the camera as far as audio goes. So kind of the last thing is you really wanna be thinking about your audio um, and your whole kind of workflow. Do you have enough space to really create that blurry background and get that depth of field look. Question of the day, what are your tips for creating that blurry background depth of field? You might even be more technical and be able to add some value. So definitely comment in the comment section below and remember that some of the best tips and advice come from you, the Think Media TV community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. Share this video with maybe somebody who's trying to figure out how to get a blurry background in their videos. And hey, if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV Video Gear Buyer's Guide, it's actually uh, a complete guide that goes over my best recommendations for cameras, lenses, lighting, all of that kind of stuff for every budget. So you can grab that for free. I'll link it up on the YouTube card as well as in the description below. Until next time, Think Media TV is helping you go further, faster in media. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon. Lighting reviews. I'm going to get this. I'm going to do the whole thing straight through right now. No mess ups. All right. Three, two, and depth of field or even bokeh. Okay? Okay. Bokeh. It's not bokeh. Bokeh. It's a bokeh. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to roll up my sleeves. This is what I do.